Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the award-winning recovery podcast, Get in the Herd, brought to you by the McShin Foundation. I, I'm Nathan Mitchell. I'm your host today. I feel like I haven't been here in, in a month or so. Justin, how long has it been? Uh, it's been it, about a month. It's been one week. No, 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 don't, no. don't, don't do that. Do that. <laughs> well, today coming back, uh, onto the show, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Grateful to be here. We have with us somebody who has a lot of letters behind his last name. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, I know I love it, right? Kevin Peterson is the founder of the chronic hope Institute, which provides healing for families in crisis due to addiction and codependency. Uh, it also provides family addiction coaching training for clinicians. So welcome, Mr. Peterson, M-A, L-M-F-T, L-M-N-O-P, Q-R-S, A-O-S, A-S-A-P. Uh, welcome to the show, Kevin. Glad to finally get to have you here and meet you. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's you put enough time and effort into those damn initials. You're like, you know, I earned those. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, working yeah. on getting some behind my name as well. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Maybe that didn't really mean a whole lot, but you know, whatever. <laughs> well, that's a, so MA, that's a master's of, that's a, a, a what is, what is the Master MA? of arts. Master and of so, arts. And then I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of Colorado and the state of Florida. Uh, and, and then I do family addiction coaching uh, across the country. Oh, wow. Yeah. So my understanding, uh, Kevin, is that you're in Jacksonville. We are currently both on or very near to tornado watches. So if at any moment y'all are watching and you see part of the herd swirling behind us, um, don't, don't worry too much. We'll, we'll figure it out. I've got, I've got tables to get under here. Yeah, Justin's got us well prepared. But we are on the third floor, which is the top floor of this building. So... Uh, yeah, there, we, we, there's a potential for anything at this moment, but I like it like that. Keeps it raw, keeps it live. So you are <laughs> what licensed, uh, marriage and family, uh, what's the Therapist. T? Therapist. Therapist. Yeah. So what does that mean? My friend, what is the chronic hope Institute? What are you all doing, um, with that work and your books? Wow. Oh gosh. <laughs> that's a, I, how much time you got? <laughs> yeah. well, it's all about you, buddy. <laughs> um, so we are, uh, we are a group of therapists. Uh, I started my private practice in 2004. This is a second career for me. Okay. I, I went back to graduate school uh, in 2008. Um, sort of, I'll tell you the story. Um, in 2007, I was uh, 16 years sober, 43 years old. Uh, still very, I'm very active in my 12-step world. And and I just got to that point where I was like, you know, I just don't, sales is not where I want to spend the net rest of my life. I, I figured I was halfway through my natural life, you know, and I, I, I really wanted to make an impact. Um, it wasn't going to be selling things or, you know, and, and what I was doing. So I literally, like a good alcoholic, quit my job <laughs> with, <laughs> with no, no plan. plan. <laughs> <laughs> I applied to one graduate program. But I, uh, and I got in, I went to the Regis University, a little Jesuit school in Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. And, and, but you know, here's the thing. And, and I have, uh, there's a, a, one of my mentors in, in the 12 step community, um, always said that if, if, if God has work for you to do, he will kick the doors open for you. All you have to do is show up. And, and so I took that to heart and I did. And, and that's exactly what happened. I, uh, my undergraduate, I went to USC in California and I was a disaster. I mean, I, I literally got kicked out. And so then I went back sober, but I barely had a 2.0 when I graduated. So oh, wow. when I went to graduate school, I obviously had to sit down and do some talking, <laughs> you know, let me, let me explain what's going on here. <laughs> and, uh, and they were like, no, you're exactly who we want. You've been around the block, you know? And, and then they were like, Hey, by the way, you seem to be very interested in the family system. And next year we're going to be opening up a, a marriage and family track, not just a counseling track. And so I was actually part of the first class that graduated from that program. Um, wow. But uh, I also come from an addicted home. My mom was a prescription drug addict. I started using at 13. Um, and then my family circled the wagons on me when I was 27 and said, that's it. We love you, but nope, no more. 
Uh, uh -oh. sorry, sorry. So yeah, the, it's it's uh, all of our electronics are going off here. Sorry about that, Kevin. <laughs> it looks like the end of the world is outside right now. So let, oh let's. Oh my go. goodness! I, I promise you, my phone was on silent. <laughs> I mean, my, that was mine too. <laughs> that's the emergency alert system, huh? Yeah, that's yep. like heads up, something's coming your way. <laughs> hey, hey, I think that's your ex-girlfriend on a broom out there, Justin. <laughs> ex-wife. Oh. That's my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh, no. Oh, no. yeah oh and john schinholzer just walked in here he's he's back there looking at the tornado back there hey hey john you want to come say hello <laughs> yeah, we, we, we we're, we're just kind of free flow free flowing here this is kevin peterson with the chronic hope institute what's up kevin how you doing man hey john I'm up here doing emergency uh looking out the windows for the tornado watch so yeah i'm, I'm maybe the last guy you ever talked to run by you know what time of day it is <laughs> okay you got it man <laughs> 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 John's, John's going to sit here. He's going to be our watchdog. It's actually uh -huh. kind of fun. I, I love weather. Um, yeah. I love it anyway. So anyway, back to you, my friend. May of <laughs> 1991 is when you first got into recovery. So yeah. God willing, and the creek don't rise. Uh, what You're going to have 31 years in a, in a few weeks. On May 5th, uh, May 1991 5th. is the, my, was my first day sober. And uh, that has propelled me through everything, um, through graduate school, through my internship, through working in a community mental health facility, and then opening up my private practice, swearing to God that I would never work with alcoholics and addicts and their families because those people are crazy, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's all I do. And, and what I really noticed and, and, and when I got into the private practice world was there's tons of services for the individual addict and alcoholic, but the family kind of gets left on the wayside. And, and that's actually something I'm really good at is, is sitting with the family either beforehand, right, and helping them understand how to set boundaries with love and empathy and how to hold the other person accountable and then how to change the family system and then how to reintegrate everybody back together. So there's like three parts. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, and you've got two books that you've published, uh, Chronic Hope, Parenting the Addicted Child and Chronic Hope families and addiction um tell tell us you know with all the experience that you bring to the table and working with families and working with children um uh john, take care john sorry <laughs> we've got a um, cow yeah <laughs> we actually have a couch over here um <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say we're usually a little more organized, Kevin, but the reality is this is the way it is. This is this is uh, uh, authentic recovery here. That's uh, okay. But, you know, I, I I love this I love this theme. Going back to you, of yeah. course, I love this theme of what you do because, you know, my one of the the greatest things that has happened to my mother and my relationship with my mother in recovery is her learning how to say no to me, um, and learning to stop enabling me and 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 setting herself up for, for disappointment and pain and while also not helping me find the tools myself, you know, to, 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 to live life on life's terms. Um, so what have you found to be like the basic tenants, I guess, in relationships with the family of the addicted person? Well, you know, there's, there's, gosh, there's, there's a lot, but you know, the, the, the initial concert conversation is always, you know, them explaining to me, the family, you know, explaining to me what a great person the person is when they're not drinking or using, you know, and and, and uh, how they're, but they just they just can't seem to control the alcohol or the drugs, and when that happens, all hell breaks loose. And you know, I mean, you know the story. I mean, they're they're dipping into the college fund for the kids, or they're you know pawning the car or whatever it is they're doing, and the family. Generally, when the family gets to me, they've kind of tried everything. You know, they've, they've tried the gentle approach. They've tried the, you know, we're going to sit down and rationalize and reason with them and talk to them. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, my parents tried over and over and over. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then just did the opposite, you know. Yeah. And, and so, you know, what I teach people to do is hold boundaries in three categories, drugs and alcohol, work and school, and behavior in the family. You know, and, and I, and I show them how, so it's not a, it's not, my books are not academic. They're not uh, novels. They're how to, you know, people, by the time people get to me, they're like, what do we do? I, yeah. I need to know what to do. And I need you to coach me on how to do it. 
And, and so I'm like, great, we're going to have three areas. It's, we're going to have, let's call it boundaries, accountability, and structure. So let's just take drugs and alcohol. The boundary is no drugs, no alcohol. The accountability is you have to do drug testing and breathalyzing, you know, on a regular basis. The structure, which is rewards and consequences, right, is that if you pass the tests, you get all the benefits of being a member of the family. If you don't, you don't. And it's okay. We still love you but we're going to respect your choices and your decisions. Does that make sense? It does. I, I, I'm interested. Yeah. The, the, I'm, 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 this is interesting. Please keep going. Okay. So, so the, the concept here is about helping them understand because every family I talk to says the same thing. Oh, we've tried boundaries. They don't work. I'm like, no, they work. You just didn't hold them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they don't know how, because nobody sits down and talks to them about that. So I give them a concrete plan. No drugs, no alcohol. We're going to do a weekly drug test. We're going to do, you know, we're going to use a sober link device or we're going to use a, you know, whatever. You can go on Amazon and buy, buy a breathalyzer or whatever. And, and it's going to be black and white. And we're going to tell the person, you know, look, it's your choice, you know, but, but we're no longer going to allow you to take the family, you know, down with you, you know. And, I, you know, what I always tell the families is every morning you wake up. And you open the front door and then here comes a car for the roller coaster. And you make a choice to get on or to get off. You know, it's totally up to you. And one of the things that I really try to help people understand is you don't have to get on that car. You can let that roller coaster go by and not and choose to not be a part of it. Whoa. You know, and, and, and that's hard for them, right? Because their job has been maintaining that person's life. And, and now they're like, well, wait a minute. If I, if I don't get in there and make sure the trains run on time, who knows what will happen? I'm like, right. But see, you also need to allow that person to start experiencing the consequences of their actions. Mm. And if you keep stepping in and softening the blow or eating the consequences, they're not going to learn anything. Now, let's be clear. If somebody's doing, you know, cocaine meth, opiates, that kind of stuff, I have a much quick, quicker trigger. I mean, normally if it's marijuana and alcohol, I'm like, let's try it for 30 days see how it goes. Mm. That stuff, people, I mean, we all know the whole fentanyl thing right now is just, just it's just, it's, it's terrifying is the only word for it. And so when we, when we get to that, I'm like, no, let's just go straight to intervention and treatment. And in, in my books, I show people, here's how you pick an interventionist. Here's how you pick a treatment center. Here are the questions you should ask. Here's who you call. Here's how it works. And that's like the first, that's the first section of the of families in addiction is if you have an active person in your family system, here's what you do. Um, by the way, um, both books are available on PDF for free. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's awesome. I, I believe in giving everything away for free. So, you know, Go online, go to my website, chronichope.us. Right on top, there's a banner. I think you click here for free book. Just take the book for free. Take it. All my interviews are on the website. All the information, you know, if you'll allow me, I'll take this interview and put it on there. I, I want people to have everything for free. You know, and Ju Justin is uh, putting the link in the comment, in the uh, scroll right now. He's about to put it in. It's chronichope.us. Yes. Uh, is that that's correct? Yeah, that's he's it. Putting that in right now, and it, it should be going through. We'll have it in the comments as well. But I'm looking at the page too. That's amazing that they're for free because I was gonna pimp you out with Amazon here. <laughs> uh, but you know, free is better than free is better than Amazon. Um, so anyway, please continue. I, I, so so there's like I said, three categories. First category is drugs and alcohol. Second category is work or school, depending on the age of the person, right? A lot of times I get people that are in high school or, or young adults or they're still living off mom and dad. And so what I tell them is, you know, when it comes to school, uh, we're going to do things real simple and straightforward. There's three things we're going to worry about. Are you going to class? Are you turning in your homework? And are you achieving a level of grade point average that's, that, that we're okay with? And we make it real clear and black and white. And most schools nowadays have like an online portal system. And I'm not telling the parents to sit there 24 hours a day and refresh and constantly check. I'm like, no, 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 no. Once a week, we're going to go on like Friday afternoon and we're going to take a look and we're going to say, and, and we're going to check the drug tests 
you know, we're going to check the school stuff and see if it works and all that stuff done. Boom. You know, no problem. It, and it's black and white. If you've done everything the way we want you to do it and you think everything's groovy, you know, great, fantastic. You win. And you get to have all the benefits of being a member of the family. If you don't, then you don't. And that's because you made a choice. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then yeah. the last category is, so that's the boundary is those three items. The accountability is the portal. And then the, the rewards and consequences is, is when we get to the family meeting and just take a look. The last category is behavior in the family. So we're talking about, you know, curfew, uh, keeping your space clean, being polite, no lying, no stealing, you know, the basics, right? You know? <laughs> and, 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 and again, what I, what I uh, preach is we're going to have a weekly family meeting like Friday night or Saturday morning. We're going to review everything and it's black and white. If you've passed the drug test and done your schoolwork or, or gone to work, you know, whatever, whatever the combo package is, if it's, if it's half work, half school, great, then you can help participate with us financially. You know, if it's, if you're just working full time, but you're living in our house, great, you'll be paying rent. I mean, we're going to teach you how to be an adult. Right. Mm. And, um, and it's just that simple. And it's that straightforward. And, and I try to make it easy. I mean, I, I see a lot of people that have these like 10 page contracts for someone. I'm like, Oh no, no nobody, <laughs> nobody's paying attention. That's not going to work. Make it one page, simple, black and white. You know? Well, I'm, the reason I'm laughing, Kevin is, and, and my mother and I are great now. And there was a time when I, I, you know, I had just gotten out of jail the first time. I had just, I just had the first legal consequence for my using. I was 41, 40, 41 at the time. Um, I'm gonna be 46 this year in a few weeks. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna own the 46. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> my, my mother did the same thing. She put together this contract, and it had all these stipulations I won't use. And she was really keen on me getting on top of my debt at the time, and. Uh, <laughs> which whatever but yeah <laughs> the whole the i'm not gonna use i'm not gonna go out thing and i i was high as gas when i signed it you know and and i mean that that was never obviously gonna stick it was never gonna be useful and you know i think when i had gotten arrested and i had to move back in before i moved back in she she asked me you know is this is this something you know is this a serious mind you my, my you know I'm, I'm coming off of methamphetamines um you know is this is this a serious problem she asks me or is this just a recreational thing and of course, I'm like, oh, it's just a recreational thing. I don't do it all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I, I and, and then, you know, and we spiraled down from there. Um, yeah. That those that last year of my using, you know, I, I used for I used for a long time, but in my using, I I was very isolated from my family. I mean, there were obviously there were effects on my family, but I I didn't. There there were effects, but I wasn't I wasn't living with them. I wasn't. I, I was very isolated and just withdrawn and, and, and not showing up when I said I would show up and being, I wasn't present and, and all, and I have a, you know, I have a fantastic family and, you know, when I needed them and came back to them, you know, they, they immediately jumped on the try to help me bandwagon and I immediately glommed onto that good, you know, that good heart. And, you know, I, I we're, we're living amends, you know, and, right. and work and, and, uh, and use that to, to my, you know, to my advantage at the point. And, I see. I, I really wish she had had your books and your your help at the time. You know, I wish I'd been able to. But but hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Yeah. Because I, I'm looking at the comments, and you know, Debbie Debbie Rosenbaum, who's on here, she is our board chair here at McShin Foundation, and she's a family member of a person in recovery and a, and, and a person who has long term recovery, but you know, who struggled with getting to that, and now she excuse me, um, you know, she and, and I, there were other people commenting on how helpful this is. You know, I, I can't tell you, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect with this conversation. And I'm so, you know, obviously laughing about the tornado, et cetera, and John walking in, but, you know, listening to you and you, what you're doing, man, I, I, I really have a lot of respect. So what do you see as the next step maybe, or, you know, what, what else are you doing? Well, so yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you know, it's really funny. It's uh, writing a book is like getting a tattoo. You know, you, you get your first one, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and then you're like, I need to write another one. You know, <laughs> and, so and, uh, relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, I need more. Um, I I I have to tell you, it's you know, it's really funny. Is my wife, uh, who's also in recovery, um, 
she she was the one that really put it to me uh, in like 2000 and I want to say like 15 or 16. 16, we got married in 2000. I don't know. So, you know, the, you know it's, it's all marital bliss. You, know? you, you might want to remember that before you go home tonight. Yeah, no, I'm home. <laughs> oh, before she goes home anyway. <laughs> um, you, know, uh, you know, the funny part is we used to, we had the same home group in Denver, Colorado, and she asked me out and, and uh, it was pretty funny. And um, anyway, <laughs> I would come home every day from work and, and uh, you know, in 2014, the state of Colorado legalized recreational marijuana. And so what started walking into my door was these parents with these kids, whether they were 16, 26 or 36, where they're like, ah, you know, what do I do? What, what do I do? You know, what do I do? And 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 so I would tell my wife this. I'm like, oh, my God, you're not going to believe it. Yet another family, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, you know, here's the thing. Your message needs to be carried to a larger audience than one family at a time, because there are people out there dying and they need to hear what you have to say. They They, they need to have access to your system of how to help, you know, help the person. Setting boundaries isn't about punishing the person. It's just about making it clear that, hey, I love you, but I'm no longer going to let you destroy the family, you know? Mm. And if you want help, I will get you help, but you have to take the help. You know, you're not going to, I'm not going to pay your car payments. I'm not going to pay your insurance payment. I'm not going to give you a phone. I'm not going to do any of those things until I know that you're serious about getting sober and getting back on track. And then if you are, then great. I'm happy to help you if that, that's what has to happen. But, you know, that's, that's the big thing. So, so for me, it's about being able to take this message of let me help you help your loved one. That's, by the way, that's just the first piece. Because, you know, the second piece is now let me help you. You know, let me help you because, you know, you know, the thing, right? I mean, in recovery, we talk about, you know, the 12 step world is this much about I'm, I'm putting my fingers together like an inch away uh, <laughs> for those of you that can't see me um, is this much about drugs and alcohol. And it's this much my wingspan here about how we live and how we act and how we treat people. Right. And it's the same thing for families that struggle with the family of origin disease or codependence or whatever you want to call it. They're so used to being so heavily invested in controlling the person and controlling and dictating the entire environment that they have to learn a new way of life also. And that's really hard for them because they've been probably taught this since they were small children. I mean, we all know that addiction and alcoholism is you know, very much family oriented and generational, et cetera, et cetera. So these are things they were taught early on. And so they think what they're doing is normal. You know, and to get them to learn to let go and say, hey, you know, look, if you're if this is how you're going to live and this is how you want to roll, that's cool. You're just not going to do it here and you're not going to do it with my support and stand back. That's scary for them. And, and I, so then I like helping them get through that process about taking care of themselves and addressing their own trauma wounds, their own attachment wounds and their abandonment wounds. And, and so that's kind of that's when you say what's next. To me, that's what's next is really because it's easy to say set boundaries and, and, and then they try and then the person starts to freak out and they're like, ah, what do I do? I'm like, OK, well, let's talk about that. You know? Well, you you mentioned the difference between working with individuals who are smoking, you know, smoking cannabis or, you know, weed um, or drinking versus, you know, what's out there now oh. with you know, straight up fentanyl everywhere, you know, even, even in, you know, even in some cannabis products, occasionally it comes up. Um, but, you know, meth is laced with cannabis, uh, with um, fentanyl, fentanyl. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, cocaine is laced with fentanyl. Everything seems to be laced with fentanyl these days. So, you know, what do you do with those, the parents who are dealing with that, with heroin and, and opiates? Because the, the you know, not, not a lot of people dying from, from weed overdosing, um, but death from an overdose from fentanyl. I mean, that's quick. So when, when, so like when I first talk to a family and they come in and, you know, they're like, Hey, uh, you know, they're, this is person that struggles with, like you said, meth, fentanyl, opiates. I'm like, okay, well, so we can definitely put, I call it that like that, those, those three, the boundaries, accountability and structure in those three areas, I call that plan a. Okay. And, and, and like in my book, there's like a worksheet and I make it really simple and easy, you know, um, so we, I tell them we can still put together plan a, but we're probably going to try it for like a week, you know? And the truth is most addicts at that point are going to be like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that. 
you know, and oh, so yeah. then we, you know, where are they just, they're like, no, I'm not going to do it, you know, and then, and then, then, you know, the whole cavalcade of, of, bull, of nonsense. You can say bullshit. <laughs> Okay, you can the, say bullshit. <laughs> all the bullshit starts. You don't love me. I'm the victim here. You hate me. This is your fault. And it's like, uh huh. I, by the way, I said all those things. You know. Yeah. I, mean, I was about to say that sounds familiar. Yeah, Justin yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's not just me. Huh? <laughs> and and uh, you know, by the way, the reason why I don't really enjoy working, I mean, not just don't, but I I really don't work with individuals on a drug addiction and alcoholism, because I'm like, it's simple. Go to AA. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get a sponsor, work the steps, stop bothering me. You know, <laughs> and 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 then once you do that, we can talk about your stuff. But don't come here thinking I'm gonna get you sober. I mean, that's moronic, you know. And we're, we're by the way, we're gonna start, we're just gonna incorporate that in the peer recovery specialist manual here in Virginia. You know, we're gonna be training peers. Just get over it, go to AA, you'll be fine. Just don't yeah. use. <laughs> I mean, Stanford University, where I was born in, in 1964, <laughs> did a study uh, in 2020 on what is the most effective method for alcohol abstinence. And they looked at, I mean, this is Stanford University, right? It was a school of psychiatry. They looked at psychiatry, psychology, therapy, blah, 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 blah treatment. You know, guess what the answer was? AA. Oh, my God, who would have thought? You know, and it's so simple. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> oh, so someone is using opiates and fentanyl. Yeah, there we I, are. What, what, then we go straight into let's find you an interventionist because the family, I know they think they can do it themselves. They really can't. You know, they, they, they really need that help of a pro that's going to walk in and handle the situation and, and sort of lay it down. And then, and if we're going to look at an interventionist, then we're also going to look at a treatment program and we're going to start talking about what treatment looks like. And, and again, in my chapters in my book, I talk about you know, this is what the continuum of care of treatment looks like. You know, there's detox, inpatient, PHP, IOP, OP, sober living. And it really, we're talking really about a year to a year and a half, you know, hopefully of keeping somebody engaged in the process and then how to get there, how to afford it. Um, I put a lot of websites in there. I mean, I try to give them as much information as humanly possible because you know what terrifies me is these families, they go up and they Google treatment. You know, and oh, the, the stuff they get. And, you know, the sad part is there's some very unsavory characters in our world, you know, that take advantage of people. You don't say. I know. I you know. Don't say. I've had, let me tell you, I've had families come to me and say, I've spent a quarter million dollars on my kids so far. And I'm like, why? Don't you have insurance? I mean, wh why wouldn't you? Wh why, why? And they're like, well, we talked to so and so who's an expert. And they said this, 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 and this, and he's still using. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, why don't we try this instead? You know, and I, again, I think, you know, I, I just try to apply logic uh, and help people see things really clearly and straightforward and give them a plan so that they can be like, oh, okay. It's not just, you know, like everybody gathering together and holding hands and saying, you know, I really love you, but you really, this is really upsetting to me. It's like, that, that doesn't help. My parents did that to me repeatedly. My, I mean, I had girlfriends and friends and bosses that are like, you know, Kevin, we really need to talk about, I mean, my favorite thing was when I would see a therapist and he's like, you know, I think we need to talk about your drug and alcohol use. I'm like, oh, this is going to be our last session. You know, <laughs> it's been nice <laughs> meeting you. <laughs> Sidebar, I, I told a therapist I had a problem with meth, and I think the next week he was prescribing me Adderall. So, oh my God. yeah, that's that was a problem. <sighs> well, I, didn't, I honestly didn't know what it was at the time. Boy, did I enjoy that. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, that's the other thing, too, that I would tell you that I, I struggle with, well, not struggle, but one of the other things that's my, my mission in life is to educate my profession, you yeah. know. They really don't get it. Here's the story I always tell people. Um, and you let me know if I'm rambling on too much. Oh, no, please, please. <laughs> okay. Um, the story, so I went to Regis. It's this great little Jesuit school in Denver, and they just have a great program. And I, I get asked back to speak um, to the uh, substance abuse class, you know. I remember when I took substance abuse and they're like, oh my God, he's a genius. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but I get asked back to speak to it. And, and, I, and I always, you know, do my thing and talk about my personal recovery and how it em empowers me to do what I'm doing and where I'm at, and what's going on. And, and how I created the system that I created and why, da, 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 da. 
And, and, and I'm like, look, I know this is totally different than what you're taught in graduate school because I went to graduate school. And it's not, I mean, that's not what we're taught. And so I'm telling you, when you work with alcoholics and addicts, you need to do things differently. And one lady looked at me a couple of years back and said, so I have a question. I'm like, what's your question? And she said, I get the idea from what you're talking about is that you think in order to be an effective substance abuse counselor, you have to be in recovery. I said, well, here's, I'm going to answer your question by asking you a question. And she was probably 35 or 40. I was like, do you have any kids? And she's like, yeah, I have two. I said, did you ever experience any postpartum depression? And she's like, yeah, both times. I said, why didn't you call me? I'm fully trained and licensed and, and, and that sort of thing. And she looked at me. I said, because I'm a guy. How could I possibly understand what it feels like to be you? And she's like, right. I said, how could you possibly understand what it's like to be me? You know, I, I need someone that's going to look me in the eye and say, kid, I get it. I know exactly what you're going through. Let me show you the way out. Same thing with the families. I grew up, my mom was a prescription drug addict. We had a big, beautiful $2 million home, BMWs, trips to Hawaii, all the really cool stuff. But on the inside of that house, man, it was a total shit show. Every day I would come home, mom had a migraine. You know, we were hours late to every family event. We never knew what was coming next. Dinner, dinner was who knew what dinner was, you know. And, and so that's what I grew up in. I grew up in that chaos and that crisis and that, that drama. And, and, and then I started using. So I grew up in a house of addiction. I became an addict. I got sober. And then I became a mental health professional. So when I'm, well, that's why I love working with the families because I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. I understand where you're coming from. My mom died in 2014 from long-term prescription drug abuse, you know? And which is really sad. I love my mom. I mean, I'm, there's no negative thoughts there. But I love my mother. But when I went to the ER, the ICU, because she'd had three heart attacks, and the, the doctor came out, and he's like, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, well, it's okay. What's up? He's like, well, your mom came in on every single drug I could give her at the toxic levels. I, I can't. There's nothing I can do. I'm like, yeah, I know. And he's like, really? He's like, because your dad's in the waiting room bawling, saying, oh, my God, it's such a surprise. And I was like, oh, bro, I, okay, here's the deal. I'm a therapist. I do addiction, family work. I love my parents. I love my mother. It's been this way for 50 years. My dad lives in the state of denial. And, and he's like, and the, I could see the doctor was visibly like relieved. He's like, oh, my God. Okay, I thought I was missing something. But that's the level of the sickness of the family disease. You know, he had lived with her for 50, 60 years and watched her and, and still was like, I don't know how this happened, you know, and, and it's, it, to me, that's, that's just so sad. And, and so my mission is to help the family and help them see things differently and come up with a solution. Wow. How is your father doing now? If you don't mind. Oh, you don't no. Let me going into that. No, not at all. My dad passed away last July. Um, he was 89. Um, and, you know, it was really interesting. And about a, my mom died at Thanksgiving 2014. And a year after she died, um, my dad looked at me and said, you know, I think your mom might have had a drug problem. Yeah. But I was OK with that. And that my dad, by the way, my dad's mom was an alcoholic, you know, and ran the family. Very matriarchal. And so he he had grown up in that environment and he was comfortable with that environment. He was comfortable with being that, the role that he was playing, if that makes any sense. You know, and, and, I, and I had suggested that he try Al-Anon and I suggested a bunch of things. And I basically got very politely or not politely told to mind my own business, mm. you know, and that I didn't know what I was talking about. I mean, I think I was like 20, 25 years sober at that point. I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay also a licensed dad. therapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. what, what do I know? But but that's I mean, that's the thing is that's the thing about alcoholics and addicts. Right. They know they have a problem. They just don't want to quit. You know, I mean, they're like, no, I'm not quitting. The families really don't think they have a problem. You know, they, they honestly think like, no, no, no. If it wasn't for me, they'd be dead. And I'm like, well, yeah, but they're dying anyway. So, so is your way really working? That's the hard conversation that I have to have with the families is like, you know, God bless you for taking care of your 38 year old child, but is it working? You know, I mean, is it really working? And, and they have to acknowledge and understand that, no, it really, it's really not. And that what they need to learn to do is let go of them with all the love and compassion that's available and say, you know what, you're going to have to start figuring this stuff out on your own. 
you know, and, and, you know, obviously you're going to have to get sober and, and, and until that happens, I just, I just can't help you. There's just nothing I can do. Yeah. So I'm looking at your website now, Kevin, uh, uh -oh. or should I, should I call you Dr. Peter? Is it no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Any, no. Mr. Peterson. Yeah, uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. All right. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking and you know, I, I'm clicking around cause you know, I, I like to do that and I, I'm clicking, <laughs> let's see. So you're uh, bored listening to me? Is that what you're saying? No, <laughs> not, at all, not at all. Um, let, let us support you and how we help. And I'm looking at learn more about family addiction coaching. Um, you have a lot of, you know, the access to the eBooks for free. Um, looks like you have a lot of things here for free and then products, but so what, does the Chronic Hope Institute do, you know, beyond the books? What else can your, your, how can somebody talk to you or talk to a licensed therapist sure. and get the coaching? That's what I guess I'm asking. Oh yeah, no, no problem. I, uh, there should be on my website, there should be something that says book an appointment. <laughs> and, uh, uh, let me see. Contact. There probably is. Oh, book it up there. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. if you click on contact us um, and click book an appointment, you can, you can get to that. You can also subscribe to the newsletter. Um, I guess at some point you can figure out how to log in as if you become a, a member, but there's a lot of, a lot of really useful stuff here. I'm just clicking around it now. Um, yeah. I, I am very keen to, I'm going to download the audio books and put it in my audible Good. Um, and listen, because I, you know, I, I, be well, because my next question is this. So, you, you know, we've talked a lot about the parents. How does this work for the individual, um, like the, the, the sons and daughters who have alcoholic or, or addicted parents? How does that work? I, I know that the 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 yeah, the dynamic shifts, but it's still yeah. a lot of the same thing, isn't it? Well, it is. It's so that's it's really the same. I mean, it is the same thing. It's about learning how to set limits and boundaries with the people, whether regardless if they're your parents your spouse, your children, your coworker, your buddy, whatever. Um, it's about being able to look them in the eye and just saying, you know, I love you. Um, but uh, until this changes, I'm just going to, you know, limit my, my, my access to you. And I, I had to, I had to do that with my family, with my parents. You know, I, I told my mom, I love you and I'll always love you. You're my mom. But, you know, until this changes, I just, I'm not going to be, I mean, I, I'll spend time with you, but it's just going to be limited, you know, because it's really uncomfortable for me to be around someone who's high all the time, you know, um, after she died, you know, uh, and we, my sister and my wife went into her house in, in Colorado. And I mean, they, I mean, literally we had a great big giant box of all the prescriptions that she had been shopping around. And, and then a, like, literally, I'm not kidding. Um, a pad you know, like a collection of, of unfulfilled, unfilled prescriptions, like about an inch high of, uh -huh. of painkillers and all sorts of stuff and anti-anxiety and benzos and SSRIs and all sorts of crazy stuff. And, you know, and so I just, you know, it, it's, it's really about learning how to tell your family member, I love you. Um, I, I want you to get help and I will help you get help. But if you choose not to get help, I'm going to choose to keep up some really strong boundaries. Yeah. And, and that can be mom and dad. I mean, trust me, I work with plenty of people that it's, we're talking about their parents, yeah. you know, the, the boundary part and, and sticking by those boundaries. You know, I, I know in my active addiction, I was always the one trying to set the bat, you know, or to, to set the boundaries and, and to, and go past those boundaries. Yeah. You know, the, the, like I need, this is how I need you to help me. I need you to do this for me and that will help me. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> It's always forty dollars. I just need forty dollars. It's I. It it. it I, it's funny because I get that a lot today. You know, in my role um, as a as a recovery coach. Yeah. You know, with, with participants who have gone back out and it's you know hit me up after you know. Hey, can you can you help me out with forty bucks for the guy? I'm like, man, you know, forty bucks, dude. I know what forty dollars does. You forget that I'm a person in recovery. Forty bucks is almost a trigger for me. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, and, I get it. And, and yeah, it's like, mm, you know, I'm going to help you, but I, 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 you know, that's, I struggle with the boundary part now too. And, sure. and you know, um, having, you know, you know, being in recovery, you know, I'm, I'm just a little over four years at this point, so I'm still fresh. And, right. and I recognize that in my interactions with people, because my people pleasing is, is coming, you know, I'm, I'm not as people pleasing as I used to be, but it's there and it definitely rears its head when I'm hungry, angry, tired, lonely. Um, Wait, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Yeah, sure. Um, Haddle, <laughs> Haddle versus Halt. Um, uh, but 
you know, those things definitely come out for me. And, and I get that a lot, you know, it's always, you know, Hey, you know, can you take me over here? You know, Hey, you know, can you, can you, you know, uh, pay for my phone bill? I'll pay you back in a day or two. I'm like, you know, I love you, but you know, like, like I don't have it like that, you know, and, and I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah. not, see, I, I, I struggle with the not apologizing part because I'm still apologizing when I can't do things for people. You know? And a lot of what I do with the families, the continued work that I do. So let's say we've set the boundary. We've told the loved one, hey, you know, uh, you got to quit drinking, got to quit using. If you're willing to follow this path of these boundaries, we'd be happy to help you. Uh, and that person is like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, or, or, you know, we're, we're, you know, all the stuff starts, all the hustle starts. Right. Yeah. And, and then that's when the family comes back to me and they're all of a sudden they're like, Oh, he says he called the drug center and that they weren't that he went in there and I'm like, okay, time out. Stop. I'm going to ask you a question. How do you know when an alcoholic or an addict is lying? It's when they <laughs> when their lips are moving. You know, and they, and they just kind of look at me and I'm like, I'm not saying your kid or your husband or your parents are bad people. They're lying. And and cuz the truth is the truth. You go to the drug place, you pee in the cup, you get the results. Right. You know, you go, you go to school or you go to work, you do your work, you get paid. You go to school, you turn your work in, you get, it gets, you get credited for it. It's black and white. We have to stop living in this world of, oh, no, here's the exception. I mean, you know, and it's the same thing. It's always like, oh, he said he called, called the recovery coach. He, and that guy never called him back. And I'm like, really? That's funny because I was on the phone with that guy this morning and he showed me his phone and, he, and, and there's been no calls. Oh, Oh, and I said, so we have to get into that black and white world of accountability. You know, that's, and that's a big thing, right? In sobriety is that it's not, there's no fudging. It's, it's, you either, I, you either did it or you didn't. Right. You know? And, and let's just call it what it is. And, and that's really the thing when it comes to helping the families understand, oh, well, you know, he says, uh, you know, he says he needs, here, here was one. This is a real live one from a couple of weeks ago. Oh, well, you know, she's, she's in her IOP program and sober living. And she says, there's, you know, there's no food and there's nothing to eat. And no, so I, I sent her a bunch of money uh, on her, you know, Uber eats program. And I'm like, Oh no, let's, 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 let's not do that. Let's not. No, 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 no. I said, I know that treatment program. I know the owner. She's a very close friend of mine. I know the other girls that she's in there with, they will feed her. Her recovery coach will come get her and take her to go grocery shopping. Oh, as a matter of fact, she did that that same day. So she's hustling you. And, and they were just like, oh, I said, it's okay. But you just have to get to that point and realize there's, I, I mean, having, being a recovering addict and an alcoholic, I got so used to lying about everything just instinctively that it would just come out of my mouth. You right. know, hey, Kevin, did you do this? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, and, and I'm like, why am I lying? You know, this is really weird. You know, why, why, you know, and why, and, but this is, but and then that takes time to unlearn. You know, that that instinctive pathological lying. But for the family, it's about teaching them. It's okay to say no. One of my favorite sentences is, "No is a complete sentence." <laughs> Don't have to. No, no, we're not. No, no, no negotiating. No compromising. No means no. Mm -hmm. You know. It's funny you say that, Kevin. I was doing a module on uh, self-care during a training uh, a couple last week, um, and I was I was training, I was I, we we were training a bunch of other peer recovery specialists to become trainers of trainers. So we were it was a training of training, which was an amazing class. If anybody from the class is watching right now, y'all were amazing, and I'm so so grateful to have been part of that. It's my first time out doing that. That I've done trainings before and facilitated plenty of groups, but doing this particular training. And so one of the modules I did was the self care module and, you know, me just burring right into it without really thinking too much. Cause it was literally handed to me and said, Hey, do this. And I went, oh, all right. The first thing I thought about was things that make me happy. And I, and I started, and I'm so grateful that these were all real seasoned professionals, a lot of them different levels, but you know, seasoned people. And and it quickly became not just about the things that were fun, you know, which was I'm, I'm grateful for. And a woman shared that, you know, self-care for her was saying no. And I was like, ah, and we I, I glommed on to that. And I said, ah, let's practice that. And I had everybody screaming no repeatedly. <laughs> there was like 30, 30 of us screaming no. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it uh, felt so cathartic, you know, so cool, just so yes, I don't have well, no, I don't have to do everything. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. Well, and 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 you know the funny part is right when you get somebody that they can start setting that boundary and saying no, and I, I'm going to take care of myself. The next thought that comes into their head is, oh my god, I'm being so selfish. Oh yeah, yeah. And, oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, yep. and, and and I I work so hard with them to be like, no, 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 it's not selfish. That's called self care, and self care is okay. And you can take care of yourself. And it's you're you're. I mean, and 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 I get it. The other person's gonna throw a fit because you know you're going about your day and everything's groovy, and they're like, you yeah, know, I'm I'm you know I, I'm I'm having to eat top ramen, and you're going to get steaks. It's like, well, yeah, I went to work and I earned that money, so that's kind of what happens, you know, you know when when you I mean, <laughs> and literally literally this morning had this conversation uh, with someone who got a text from some from the a family member that said. You know, I'm out here busting my ass for minimum wage, and again, I'm not, you know, I barely can afford the food and, and the and the alcohol that I need just to get by. I'm like, time out. What? <laughs> I said, did you hear what he said? And they're they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. I said, you know, I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> and and I said, but that's that's you know that's the kind of stuff we have to. That's the kind of stuff I have to work hard with the families and help them understand that. It's okay for you to say no. It's okay for you to take care of you. And remember, we're always going to tell the, the person, I love you and, and I want you to get help. And if you're ready to get help, I will move heaven and earth for you. But, it, but it, it's, I'm, not, I'm not sending you a check. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm not paying your car payment. I'm not paying your rent. No, 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 no. I'm not doing those things. If you're willing to get help, and I mean, you know, therapy, treatment, recovery coach, whatever, I'll help you engage with that and I'll pay for that. But I'm not, I'm not just sending you money so you can go back down the road. I mean, come on, we all know what happens then, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin, my friend, this is an incredible wealth of resources here. Uh, the the Chronic Hope Institute. I have to tell you, I love that y'all capitalize the the article the at the beginning i i'm a big fan of that um <laughs> but the, the chronic hope institute and kevin's two books which are available free for e uh for pdf in pdf form on his website chronichope.us or chronichope.us and those two books are i just lost the titles right here um and i think that i think they're really cool the the pictures by the way um Thank great you. stuff yeah no i i love the covers um what are the parenting names the addic- What's parenting the addicted child. Parenting the addicted child. And families and addiction. Families and addiction. Fantastic. Um, I Kevin, I, I know that we could sit here. I, I know I could sit here and talk to you for the rest of the day. I, I've enjoyed this conversation. Is there anything else you want to add to this? Because we're coming up on about a, uh, just about an hour here. Do you want to add uh, to, to make sure that we that we haven't covered? Well, you know, I think it's important. I mean, you asked like what's next. And I think um, there is a, there is, by the way, like a three hour video training for family video online educational course that I think right now it's like $27. You know, it's really, I mean, look, I'm, I'm in private practice. I don't take insurance. It ain't cheap. But at the same time, I offer everything for free and I offer like a three or four hour video course for like 27 bucks, you know? And, and it's, I mean, the, the resources are there and, and I'm, I'll be clear, I answer every email we get. So if somebody wants help and wants to know what to do or where to go, what's going on, all they got to do is email me. There's a contact us there. And it's Kevin at Chronic Hope US. And I'm just, if you're, I take the same approach. If you are willing to get help and, and, and as a family and want to fix and change things, I will help you. I will always make sure you get help. Excellent. I'm looking at your your offer right here too. Uh, a parent's guide to addiction. A parent's guide to addiction. Uh, excuse me. A parent's guide to helping the addict in your life and getting your family back. What you'll get: unlimited access, to, a lifetime access to the Chronic Hopes virtual course, um, a four hundred ninety seven dollar value. Uh, the free emergency triage call with one of our experienced coordinators. Yep. Uh, with a, that's one hundred thirty seven dollar value. That's that's I, can't, I bet that's a really helpful thing. Access to the Chronic Hope private Facebook group and monthly live Q and A sessions within the private community, all for the the price of twenty seven dollars. That's amazing. Um, 
Yeah, that's actually really amazing. I'm sending this to my mom. Uh, my 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 my, uh, my mother has the good fortune of having two of us in recovery. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and and an ex, actually, probably two exes. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's a, she's an amazing woman. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah. They, I, God bless our parents. You know, I mean, God bless our parents for what we put them through and for what they've survived. And yeah, I'm with you. Here, wait. I have someone I have to introduce you to. Sure, sure. Uh, uh -oh. We, so I have like a stuffed dolphin or something, isn't it? Uh, my wife and I have three Boston terriers. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> this is oh. Stella. Stella, Stella. Yeah, that's right. She was named after Stella from Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, fantastic! Hi, Stella. Stella she's, looks tired. She's a year and a half old. Oh. Um, we got her uh, in the. That. We got her in the midst of the pandemic from Decatur, Alabama. She was actually born deaf, so she's totally deaf. And uh, but she's she's our baby. Um, but she, you know, Boston Terriers are part of the the recovery program around here. Oh, <laughs> you know, I need to, you know, I rent and I I can't have pets where I am. Yeah. But but that's you know maybe I need a maybe I need one of those uh, uh, emotional support animals. <laughs> she is adorable. Bye. Hi, Stella. Uh, I know she can't hear me, but no, but she's she's a, she's trust me. She, you, you, if you met her, you'd never know. She's a firecracker. She's the sweetest thing on the planet. <laughs> oh, right, she's all, she's all shy and sleepy right now. Oh. Uh, that's the life of the Boston Terrier is pretty much either dead asleep or chasing squirrels. You know, those are your options. So. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, there's one last comment from Debbie down there. What does Debbie have to say, Justin? Uh, can you see it? Debbie says, thanks, Kevin, for using your lived experience to help parents. Debbie, I was, I'm glad to see you. We got to get you guys back on the show at some point. Um, maybe if you can bring a pet with you. <laughs> In fact, maybe that's a new theme for the show. Get in the herd, bring your pet. What do you mm -hmm. think, Justin? What do you think, yeah. Justin? Yeah, I I think that would be okay. Oh, I love it. So, Kevin, is there anything else you want to share with us? No, man, that's it. It's uh, it's an honor. It's a pleasure. By the way, I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, the McShin. I actually, some there was like a a Facebook thing in like 2015 talking about the engagement with the jail. Yeah. Um, and the sheriff, the sheriff was like, I just got tired of picking up bodies, so I was like, screw it, we're gonna we're gonna use the we're going to use the jail and, and I already have the place. And I, I watched that and I was in awe. I was like, Oh my God, here's someone in law enforcement that gets it, you know, yeah. that straight up gets it. And huge fan of Richmond, Virginia. I have a bunch of friends in recovery that live there. And, and uh, I've spoken at the jaywalker meeting. Oh, my, my, one of my housemates, that's uh, well, I'm not saying his name, so I'm not violating right. any yeah. problem. Okay. But one of my housemates, he, he actually schedules uh, uh, the speakers for that meeting right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. I probably I might know. It, you can actually find my talk on uh, xaspeakers.org um, from the Jay Walker meeting. It was 2010, but um, yeah, oh, that, he, he hasn't been around that long. No, I, I just, yeah, I get it, but I'm a big fan of what you guys got cooking up there, so. I oh, appreciate great. that. You know, Kevin, I, I I don't know if I told you this or not, but our biggest audience are people who are currently incarcerated. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I my goodness gracious. That's awesome. And you know, I'm you know what? I'll tell you something. You guys have the inroads into that world. If there's anything I can ever do along the lines of this sort of thing, helping their families, whatever, blah, 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 just speak up and let me know. I'm always up for it, you know. I'll have to introduce and but excuse me. I'll have to introduce you to Moses, our family uh, group court family, whatever. He he's he's our family guy here. Sure. Um and he's he's got I think he just celebrated 40 years, was it? 40 in January or February? Yeah, yeah Moses 40 is the, years. Yeah, Moses is the Moses is the shit. Um, yeah. But he we facilitate here, the McShin Foundation does. Moses usually facilitates it. Um a family group. For particip for family members and loved ones of participants here um, on Wednesday evenings. So we actually do that through Zoom and in person. Uh, I think I'm we're going to have to participate. I'll, I'll let them know. I'll, Kevin, I'll put you guys in contact. And I know that Honesty is looking forward to being on the show with you at some point. She just, you know, her book came out last, uh, uh, what, the beginning of the month, I think? Yeah. Um, and has just gone 
you know, rockets, you know, so she's, yeah. she's been doing great getting that out and getting the word out. Her story is amazing. It's empowering. It is, uh, it's, it's resilience, it's recovery. So, uh, we'll look forward to, to seeing that. So Kevin, thank you, my friend, Mr. Kevin Peterson, LMNOP QRS. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say Mr. Peterson over here. Yeah. Um, Take care of yourself, and and I'm I'm really just grateful that none of us blew away by a tornado today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> me either. Me too. It's getting a little dicey out there, but you know we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Justin, for 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 being fantastic. It's great to be back in this seat. Um, we will see you next week. We've got a surprise next week. Uh, I'm not going to reveal too much because I don't quite know what we're going to do with it yet. But uh, we have a kind of a plan of action that we're formulating for the next couple of shows, and I'm actually really excited about it so stay tuned for that and then if you pay attention next week i'll tell you how i married my sister after i lived in west virginia take care of yourself thank you kevin goodbye <laughs> uh